Welcome to the Google Hangout Bible study on the book of Romans and we're having fun learning the Word of God, learning more and improving our walk. It's a blessing and I'm glad you're with us. However you're watching, YouTube, Google Plus, but you're welcome and uh, we're glad that you're joining us. You can also watch the uh, past Bible studies and uh, they, are, they are available on YouTube. All right, it's 7 o'clock, and we're going to get started in just a few moments. We left off in Romans chapter 6. Now, we're only going to cover the first eight chapters of Romans. And we, we've had a lot of sessions, and we're only in chapter 6, but it's good. We're not in a, in a hurry. And... Um, so we're taking our time and to get all the nutrients out of the word. I mean, you can never really exhaust it all, but but we're looking into it and getting as much as we can out of the scripture. Uh, lately, we've been talking about renewing the mind. That's where we left off last week. Although that scripture is is in Romans chapter twelve where the Bible says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what, what we renew our mind with is the Word of God. So, let's jump in, into chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul says, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? The book of Romans is a, a book on the gospel of grace. And people can misunderstand and think that when we teach grace, that it, it just it's a license for people to just sin and do whatever they want, but that's not what it is. Once you understand that you are loved by God, that God already accepts you, that you're highly favored, that, 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 that I mean, this is over-the-top good news that Paul said in chapter 1. He's not ashamed of this gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ, as we've talked about it in past sessions, is the gospel of grace. It is referred to as the, the gospel of uh, the, the grace of Christ. And uh, let's look at Acts very quickly. Acts chapter 20. Grace is actually a person. Do you know in Jesus' earthly ministry, he never even mentioned the word grace. He didn't have to. He was grace. He was grace per personified. He was grace walking. He demonstrated grace. He showed us what grace was all about. Romans, excuse me, Acts 20, 24 says, But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify of the or to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. So the gospel is grace. It is the gospel when we preach the word. And we preach it right. We preach when we preach the full gospel. It is the gospel of the grace of God. And when you understand grace properly, um, sin will not have dominion over your life. 
because you are, you are responding to the great love that God has for you, that he has cleansed you, he has washed you, he has erased your sin, past, present, and future on the cross. Jesus took your sins. Praise God. And so we are free uh, from sin. Welcome, Jimmy King. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Courtney. Welcome, Naomi, and uh, anybody else who's who's on. Okay. Um, anyway, Paul had to deal with this question. We've been over it a lot. Shell, he preached grace so strong that, 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 we're, that we're forgiven, that, that there's nothing that you can do to get God to love you less, not even your sin. Because we've been forgiven past, present, and future. So therefore, the people ask the question and people misunderstood and Paul's day, just like people misunderstand the day. Should we just keep on sinning? No. Paul said, certainly not. See, once you really understand grace, um, you, you understand you're free from sin and sin doesn't have any dominion over you uh, any longer. Verse 3, or do you not know uh, that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were, and this is not talking about water baptism. We talked about that. This is talking about baptism into the body of Christ. Therefore, you see, when you're born again, you're baptized into the body of Christ. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. And this, we're going to elaborate on this later, or really build on this, because that's what Paul is doing. We're going to follow right after Paul and, and build on this fact that we were baptized into his death. In other words, we were, we were buried with him. We, we died with him because... Jesus on the cross, and before he went to the cross, um, he, 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 or not before, but as he went to the cross, he was crucified, and we were crucified with him because God saw us there. Um, uh, he, he's, God saw us dead or having died with Christ. We were right there with him because we were the, the objects of his love. He did everything that he did on our behalf. Everything that Jesus did on the cross, none of it was for himself. All of it was for us. So we were baptized into his death, identified with him in his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism, this is baptism into the body of Christ, into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. It doesn't mean you, you will, but, it, but you should. Once you understand that you died with him and that you rose with him and now that you are free from sin, you can walk in newness of life. Verse 5, for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. In other words, God wants us to walk in the likeness of his resurrection. He rose victorious over sin, over Satan, and we're identified with him, and God wants us as he was victorious on our behalf over sin, God wants us to be victorious over sin. And, and he positioned us to do that. He made it possible for us to do that. It was all about Jesus and what he did. None of it is by our performance. We don't have to do anything to try to please God. Um, to, 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 or to try to, to 
get him to be pleased with us. To, we are accepted already by the Lord. Now, how are we going to walk in the likeness of his resurrection? Verse 6, knowing this. We've got to know something. What is it that we, we need to know? That our old man. Now, I talked about how we are three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Very quickly, let's just, just review this a little bit. You are a spirit. You have a soul. Your mind, will, intellect, and emotions, and you live in a physical body. Before you were born again, your spirit was cut off from God. That's that old man that he's talking about, that old sin nature that was, uh, our spirit was cut off from God. All right? Um, and before we were born again, let's just deal with this now, and we'll, we'll explain it more, but Before we accepted Jesus, we had a dead spirit. What is a dead spirit? Spiritual death. Cut off from God. Separated from God. Now, our soul was trained by that old man. This old man that he's talking about in verse 6. Our soul all those years prior to us accepting Jesus was trained by that old man, by that dead spirit. Okay, now we'll pick up on that a little later and expound on that more, but um, let's go on reading. What happened in the new birth was our, our see, our old man was crucified with him we died with Christ when we're born again that that spiritual nature has been done away that the body of sin might be done away with that we should should no longer be slaves of sin okay and so sin can't make us because that nature that made us sin um, made us uh, uh, be selfish, made us fearful, made us worry, made us um, uh, think evil thoughts. All right. The nature that made us do that, that made us slaves, has been crucified with him. That nature that made us slaves is no longer there okay go back to the uh, and if this is your first time I don't want to go back over it but, but look at the listen to the last uh, episode the last lesson last week on Romans and, and I talked about I gave you an example about a virtual reality game okay and, and, and how uh, you know people can can just get into this virtual reality thing. I mean, you could, you could actually imagine you, you're on a roller coaster. And people that have get motion sickness and, and get um, even throw up when they're, when they're finished with a roller coaster or maybe even while they're on it, um, some of those same uh, feelings and that motion sickness that people have when they're on a actual roller coaster they can experience the same thing on these virtual reality games where they're they're on this roller coaster i mean and, and not really but not in reality it's virtual reality it, it it tricks their mind into thinking they're on this roller coaster and uh and they begin to get motion sickness and throw up but being on a roller coaster is not actually happening. It's not even real. I guess you don't have to look, listen to the last week because I'm explaining it again. But it's so good because what happens is um, when, you, when, you're, when you're born again, Satan, Satan he, he plays with our minds and makes us think because we still have some of these thoughts that we had before we got saved and, and, and these thoughts are still there. And, and some Christians 
think that, well, man, I must not be really saved or I wouldn't be thinking this way. No, remember what I said. Before you got born again, that old nature was training those, training, um, had been training your mind to think the way you think in line with um, the, the laws of sin and death. That dead spirit, that old nature, train your mind, for example, to, to think evil, to think adulterous thoughts, or to think fearful. All right? And when you get born again, um, the only part of you that changes when you're born again is your spirit. Now, that's where Romans 12, 2 comes in. You've got to renew your mind. You've got to retrain your mind because all those years, all those years prior to you being born again, you've been trained by that uh, old man. Okay. And then Satan, who is a deceiver, he comes along and tries to make you think like a virtual reality game that you still have a nature that's driving you to think evil thoughts, to think adulterous thoughts, to be fearful, to worry, to be selfish. And he can get you to think that's your nature and you can't help it and that's just a part of you and, and, and you can't shake that because that's just your nature to sin. It is not. That is a lie. It is not. What he's talking about is not real. It's not happening. I'm not saying you're not thinking that way. I'm saying there's nothing. You don't have that old man on the inside of you anymore. There's nothing on the inside in your spirit driving that. It used to be. You used to be a slave. We all used to be slaves, but not anymore. Our nature has changed. That old man was crucified with him. That deceiver, the devil, tries to make you think that that you got a nature driving you to do that, and that's a lie. See? And so once you realize that, once you look into, into Romans and find out that you're free from sin, and the old man's been crucified. Now, and, and you begin to renew your mind. And you don't understand what to do about that. And you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word transform comes from a, a Greek word, metamorpho. It, it's, um, that's, oh, that's where we get our English word, metamorphosis, which means undergo a complete change. One translation says, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. See, you change the way you think. You reprogram that old mind. You renew that mind. And, and, and see, you get your mind to line up with your spirit. Because see, see, your new, new nature has the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Your new nature is just like God. Your new nature is perfect. Your new nature, you are a new creation. Old things have passed away. That old dead spirit has passed away. All things become new. You don't have a nature driving you to sin. You have a nature driving you to do right. And, and renewing your mind is getting your mind to cooperate with your spirit. And guess what? You're going to walk in newness of life. You're going to walk in that resurrected life. You're going to walk free of fear. Because having received this abundance of grace and gift of righteousness, you're going to understand you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you can live free from sin. And uh, if you do sin, and we all do miss it, sin means miss the mark, we all miss it from time to time. We have an, The good news is we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So, um, so that that's that's awesome. It really is because you will live a victorious life. Renewing the mind really is the key to a victorious life. Don't let the devil. I want to make sure that you really get a hold of this. Don't let the devil trick you into thinking that it's your nature to sin. It is not. It is your nature to do right. It's your 
It, you, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In fact, say it wherever you are right now. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's who I am. And if, if you are in a situation where you, you, you feel like you're condemned because of something you've done, if you ever get in a situation like that, just say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you're struggling with something, an, an addiction or a bad habit, and you fall into that, for whatever reason, say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you just keep saying that. And, and you're, by doing that, you're identifying with who you are, who you are in Christ Jesus. Okay? And when you renew your mind with God's Word, what you do is you replace, you're, you're doing an exchange. You're um, replacing the old way of thinking with the new way of thinking. You're transforming yourself into a new person by changing the way you think. Instead of when, when you get thoughts of fear, start renewing your mind to 2 Timothy 1.7. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When your tendency has been to worry, then that's, I mean, even though you're born again, you still uh, tend to worry. Then, Meditate on scriptures like Matthew 6, 25. Do not worry about your life. Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So don't worry about your life. Uh, first Timothy's, no, First Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care, all your anxieties, all your concerns, once and for all on him, for he cares for you. Make it personal. He cares for me affectionately, and he cares about me watchfully, okay? The Father cares for you. He, he loves you, okay? So knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, see, it's all about knowing something, renewing your mind, to the fact my old man died that old spiritual nature died it was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves of sin sin can't make us for he verse 7 says for he who has died has been past tense freed from sin past tense on the cross, Jesus said, it is finished, we were freed. But that doesn't mean, as we said last week, because you're freed doesn't mean you're free. The prison doors can be open, you can stay in there though. But come on out if you're still in because you're freed. Because you can be F-R-E-E-D but not F-R-E-E. -E. But whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Walk in your freedom. And see, and then the, the key, again, is renewing your mind. It's all about knowing something. That, that's going to come up again. Let's look at these next two verses together. Now, if, verse 8 and 9, for, now, if we died with Christ, and we did, we crucified with him. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. Wow, wait a minute. This is powerful right here. Not only did we die with him, but we were raised with him. We were identified not just in his death, but also in, in his resurrection. And so we need to have the same uh, there's a scripture in Philippians that said, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. We need to have the same mindset that Jesus has about sin. Because death doesn't have dominion over him. 
He rose from the dead. He dies no more. No more. So death no longer has dominion over him. And we should have that same mindset because we're identified with him and because death has no more dominion over Jesus, death has no more dominion over us. Sin has no more, the, the law of sin and death has no dominion over us. It's all about knowing you're not going to experience victory in your life. You're not going to experience resurrection life. You're not going to experience um, a, a overcoming, a powerful life. God wants us to live power, powerful lives, the abundant life, victorious life. It's not going to happen unless you know this. Um. We, we need to be established in this. You, you have to know, renew your mind to the fact that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. Jesus, do you think Jesus is struggling with sin right now? I mean, he, he, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he's not up there struggling with sin. Of course, we know there's no sin in heaven. Jesus is not struggling with sin. When he rose from the dead, he did that on our behalf. Sin, he subjected himself to the cross. All right? And when he rose from the dead, man, It said he dies no more. And death has no more dominion over him. Jesus is not struggling with sin. He, he's completely holy, completely pure. Verse 10. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for who? All, that's us, that's you and me. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Wow. And so what, what we need to do is we need to see ourselves the same way. Well, Pastor, you, that's Jesus. Yeah, but let's look at verse. <laughs> yeah. are, are you ready to, to get all excited? because I'm going to bring it right down to you and me. Here it is. Okay, yeah, Jesus, he dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. Uh, the life he lives, he lives to God. Yeah, but, but that's Jesus. Watch this. Likewise, you also. Put your name in there. I'll put my name, name in there. Likewise, Al, you also. Al, also, reckon yourself. Reckon means to count. Count yourself to be dead, indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Likewise, what does he mean likewise? Just like Jesus. You see, all, all these verses are connected. Let's read them together. Now, if we die with Christ, we shall be, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want us to look at a scripture that goes right along with this. 1 Peter 4.1 We're identified with Jesus because Jesus died, we died. Because he rose victorious over sin, we are raised victorious over sin. We're free. You got to believe that. 
and um, <laughs> you, have you ever seen in a movie where, where people I want to give you an example about how to reckon yourself dead I, I get, I'm going to come back to that, to that illustration but let's look at this first 1 Peter 4 1 therefore since Christ suffered for us in the flesh arm yourselves also with the same mind for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin now if you put these verses together it's really talking about the same thing he's not talking about us some people misunderstand this well yeah you know the more you suffer um, the, that'll give you the power to overcome sin. That's not what it's talking about. It's not talking about us suffering. This is talking about Jesus suffering on the cross in his flesh, dying in our place, taking our sin, suffering for us in his flesh. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. And since he suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, we should have the same mind and cease from sin because we've been freed. You see that? Sin has no more dominion over Jesus and has no more dominion over us. So both 1 Peter 4.1 and Romans 6.11 tell us that we should have the same attitude towards sin. And the result of that attitude towards sin is that, verse 12, therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Once you understand that sin, that we're dead to sin and we're alive to God, and sin has no more dominion over us, And, and, and see, we're dead to sin, alive to God. Sin has no more dominion over us. Therefore, sin can't reign. It can't take over. It can't control us. And it said, don't let. Now, don't, don't miss that because that means you have the power to stop sin. And, and remember we told you, um, there's only one time in this chapter where sin is a verb. In every other case in this chapter, sin is a noun. So you have the power to stop sin, the noun, from reigning in your life. See, God would, would be unjust to require us to do something that we don't have the ability to do. If God says, don't let sin reign, don't allow sin to reign, then that means that we have the ability to do that. We have the power to stop sin, in other words, from reigning and controlling us. And it's not, and, and, and here's what grace is all about. It's not because of anything that we've done to give us the power over sin. It's all because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Jesus, he paid it all because of his shed blood. He has forgiven us of all of our sins, past, present, and future. 
and he's given us the power to overcome sin. Now back up to verse 11. I was going to give you an, an illustration. Let me do that right now. Um, have you ever seen in the movies where um, they, they, uh, the bad guys are shooting up people and um, somebody didn't want to get killed, so they play dead. They just lie down and act like they were dead so the enemy wouldn't shoot them. Um, they would fake their death. Um, I give you that illustration to show you what to do when it comes to sin. Play dead. Now that, that might help somebody. Just play, play dead. Act like you're dead. Because you are dead. It, you are dead for real. So act like it. All right? Just play dead when it comes to sin. Because sin can't make you. All right? Um, verse 13 says, And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. Now, your members have to do with your body, your body parts. Don't let your body uh, or don't... Uh, Present your body as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. All right? Sin doesn't have dominion over you. You're not under the law, but under grace. So when you have a renewed mind, see, your body is just going to follow your mind. When your mind is renewed with the word of God, then your, your body is just going to follow suit. If your mind is not renewed, your body will be out of control. When your mind is renewed, your body will be in control. And you can stop your body from being all scared or, or worrying yourself sick or um, sleeping with somebody that's not your husband or wife, uh, fornicating. When you renew your mind, your body won't act that way. Your body will line up with that with, with your spirit because you have a renewed mind. Verse 14, mark this in your Bible because it's very important. Sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under law but under grace. And you know, it's just natural. Um, fruit really the fruit of the spirit Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, so forth, patience, all the fruit really, it's really one fruit, it's love, because it doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit are, it says the fruit, singular, of the Spirit is, and Spirit is referring to your Spirit, it's the fruit of your Born again spirit is love. And all, all those other things are just manifestations. All the other eight are just manifestation of the fruit of love. But anyway, fruit, if you ever had a garden, um, fruit just grows naturally. You can't force fruit to grow. Fruit just comes naturally. And... Um, that's what happens when you when you're walking in the spirit. It's not forced. It's not it's not effort, not self effort. Because you abide in the vine in, in Jesus, then the fruit just comes naturally. 
All right. Well, I just think we just have to just bear down and just and that that. that now listen to that. there are people in a body of Christ that think that well you just got to be disciplined and you really got to fight sin and you've really got to that's not what God wants us to do it should just flow um, out of our, our relationship and our love for the Father understanding that there's something about understanding how much you've been forgiven. He that is forgiven much loves much. We don't want to sin. We we want to live right. Oh, I got to live right, you know. Cause, and some people try to do that to get God to be to to accept them, but God has already accept, accepted us. Let, let, let me close with a scripture in Second Peter. Because this is really, really good. In Second Peter chapter one and verse five, it says, um, "But also for this reason, give all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance." To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. Now watch this. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So these things should just flow out of us naturally as we're enjoying our sweet communion and fellowship with God. I mean, self-control. Let's just pick one of these. Self-control. Well, yes, I, 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 just, need this. I just need to study self-control. It's not that deep. Control yourself. <laughs> okay. But you're not really... It's, when I say control yourself, it's not really self. You, you, yourself is controlling. It's really that you're out of your relationship with God and depending on the Lord, and you're just going to have self-control. It's not deep. Watch this. Now, here's, here's I read all that for you to see this. He said, add all of these things to your faith. Knowledge, okay, uh, or um, virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, love. If you have these things, you, you're gonna you, you're not gonna be unfruitful. But what if a person doesn't have these things? Pastor, is, is why why doesn't the person have these things? Verse 9 gives us the answer. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Wow. It's something about knowing that you have been forgiven, that, that your Sins have been forgiven. A person that lacks those traits that that the scripture just listed is somebody who's forgotten that Jesus paid the price for your sins. Because there's some listen, there's something about knowing that your sins have been forgiven, that you've that you are greatly loved, you, that, that Jesus shed his blood on the cross so that you can be free from your sins. And when you really understand how much that you have been forgiven, that, that you're, when, if you can get somebody to understand how much Jesus loves you, 
how much God loves you. I've been talking about that a lot. It's not a it's not about how much you love God. It's about receiving the great love that he has for you, that he so loved the world. The Bible doesn't get any deeper than John 3.16, for God so loved the world. In verse 17, he didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Uh, he wants us to grasp the, the, the width, the length, the depth, the height of his love. You can never exhaust it all. Exhaust what? The love of God. How much he loves you. When If you can just discover and bask in the sunshine of God's great love and walk in the love that God has for you and when you can get someone to understand that how much he loves you and that you've been forgiven and that you've been cleansed, that you have been washed, that your old man have been crucified, what we've been talking about here. If you, if you lack that stuff, and love is one of them. If you lack perseverance, if you lack, lack self-control, it's because you've forgotten how much he loves you, that, that, that you were cleansed well, Pastor, you reading into that? It said that it didn't say anything about how much he loves us. It says that he has forgotten he was cleansed from his old sin. It all has to do with with the love of God. How much he you were cleansed from your old sins because he loved you so much. He didn't have to keep doing that. He didn't have to keep cleansing you over and over and over. He, one time, he went to the cross. He offered one sacrifice for sins forever. One sacrifice for sins forever. You know what forever means in the Greek? Forever means forever. Means forever, forever, forever. He offered one sacrifice for your past, present, future sin. That's love. And I'm telling you, it's worth your time to just sit down and meditate on how much he loves you. And just just sit sit down somewhere. Get, get you a cup of tea or something. And just sit down on your favorite chair, recliner or something. Lay back on your bed. Just think about I challenge you tonight to go to bed and think about how much he loves you. The fact that he cleansed you. He loved you so much. He gave you a new nature. And the more you meditate on it, see, because the Bible tells us, how powerful is that? I mean, as you meditate on it, you'll get it eventually. If you don't have it already, man, you, you get it. And I, I don't pretend to know it all. I'm still learning in these things. But I just can't get enough of his love, and, 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 and you can't exhaust it all. One more scripture, and I'm, I'm going to show you this. It's, it's all connected in Romans chapter 8. You know, when, when God says um, that if God is for us, who can be against us? You're more than a conqueror, conqueror through him who loved you. It, it's all connected to his love. All of his blessings. His grace. What is his grace? His unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor. And Romans 8.31 says, what, what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. To what? Cleanse us. From all of our sins. <laughs> wow. So, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? 
Hmm. Wow. New Century Version says, He did not spare his own son, but gave him for us all. So with Jesus, God will surely give us all things out of his love for us. And so you're going to live right. You're going to walk um, in love. You're, you're going to have uh, bear fruit in your life when you understand how much he loves you. You just naturally want to respond to that. You, you can't even really love yourself uh, until you understand that how much he loves you. You can't really love other people correctly because you, you love others as you love yourself. And um, you really can't love others properly until you love yourself. And you can't really love yourself properly until you know you are loved. And I want you to know tonight that you are greatly loved by the Father God. He, he loves you. I'm telling you. And nothing can separate you from the love of God. We, we're more than conquerors. That's in Romans chapter 8. New Century Version says in verse 37, but in all these things we are completely victorious through God who showed his love for us. Yes, I am sure. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor ruling spirits, nothing now, nothing in the future, no powers, nothing above us, nothing below us nor anything else in the world will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's all about what Jesus did for us on the cross. He took our sins. Therefore, it's no condemnation to us. So if you lack those traits, Peter talks about Second Peter chapter 1 it's because you've forgotten something you've forgotten that you were cleansed from your old sins and when you he that understands all of us have been forgiven much once you understand that you will love much you will bear much fruit alright that's it for tonight um, and we'll, we'll pick up from here next time. I'm glad you joined us. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, um, give us uh, some feedback. Some, tell us um, if you enjoyed the Bible study tonight. You it help us by leaving us a comment. Also, I encourage you to subscribe, even if you're not watching on YouTube. Um, it would be a blessing to us if you would go and um, give us a thumbs up on it and comment would be good. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Summit Church Online. If you Google that, I mean, got Google it, but search for it in Google, uh, search for it in YouTube. Uh, you can subscribe and um, thank you for joining us and we will see you next time and we'll pick up from here next time. All right. Good night.